chapter 28, please. We are going to read verses 11 through 15 of Acts chapter 28. Read the verse responsibly. We'll read 11 together. I'll read 12. We'll alternate until we end together on verse 15 of Acts chapter 28. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing and reading together, beginning on verse 11 of Acts 28. Ready? And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day the south wind blew, and we came to the next day to Petolii, where we found brethren, and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Epi, Forum, and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Now, Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this evening. Lord, thank you already tonight for the wonderful songs we've been able to sing and listen to and for the wonderful testimonies from the folks who were on the missions trip this year. We thank you again, Lord, for what you did in each of our hearts this past week and the hearts of those who are there from the other churches. And now, Lord, we pray that you'll do something in our hearts this evening as we look at not just this passage of Scripture, but we give some thoughts and reflections upon the missions trip that you'll minister to the hearts of people in this room here this evening. Each of us would like to hear from you tonight, God. And so quiet our hearts that we would hear the still, small voice of God and minister to each individual here this evening, please. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. As was mentioned, it was the biggest group that we had experienced, at least for the missions trip. I think it might have been since... Most of you know Brother Jarvis ran the trips there for 17 years, I believe. Uh, Ran the trips there, and now Brother Wynn uh, has done it for several years. And uh, I think it might have been the biggest group they have ever dealt with, uh, trying to manage and get everybody around. And it's not an easy, easy job to do with the the folks from the different churches and then the uh, workers there and then the workers from the churches in Mexico, uh, there would be easily 90 to 100 people there when we would get to the park and begin to get set up and get everybody split in the groups and get them ready to pass out. And there's several, several thoughts I just want to give you tonight, several, several things that, that came to my mind that I want to share with you uh, this evening. And, uh, you know, what came to my mind was this verse here in Acts 28, when Paul, as most of you know, is on his way to Rome. Uh, They have suffered a shipwreck, and he's on an island, and they find another ship going to Rome, and they put him on it. And uh, you remember, he's on a ship with a lot of other prisoners. Uh, The big storm came, and the shipwreck came, and Paul had been down in the ship praying, and he comes up to tell them they're not going to be the loss of any man's life on the ship. Everybody's going to be okay. And uh, they, they took Paul's word for it, and the ship broke up, if you remember right, and they got safe to shore on pieces of the ship. So they had to wait on this island for another ship to come along, and they waited three months. And here's Paul with some Roman guards and a bunch of criminals, and he's gone three months now. We don't know how long the journey was before they got to the island, but he's at least three months here on this island. And now another ship comes and they set sail and they get at Syracuse and they're there three days and then they came to Regium and uh, one day the south wind blew so they went to the next day to Putioli and then the next phrase is interesting. Did you read that? Verse 14, where we found brethren. What a blessing that must have been to Paul. You know, we got, to, we got to this place and I found some believers. I found some other Christians. You know the great thing? 
You go to El Paso, Texas. What was that, 1,400 miles from here? And then to Mexico, and guess what? We found brethren. We found other believers that we could fellowship with. And, and we tarried with them seven days. <laughs> All right? And had a wonderful time of fellowship. And uh, then, then he travels on, you notice, in verse 15, from thence when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Epai, the forum, Papaya Forum, and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. He saw these other believers and he thanked God for them and it encouraged his heart. And I think all of us would say we were encouraged by the other believers that were there this week and encouraged by the other Christians. And just several thoughts to give you tonight. I won't, I'm not going to keep you long this evening. And number one is this, God is faithful to His Word. God is faithful to His Word. I mean, He promises to be with us, and He is. He promises to help us, and He does. He promises to use us, and He does. He promises to honor the preaching of His Word, and He does. He promises to prepare people to receive His Word, and He does. He promises to protect us while we're doing His work, and He does. He keeps His promises always. He promises to answer us when we pray, and He does. He promises to, that He'll save all those that come unto God by Jesus Christ, and He does. We saw that happen over and over and over again. And it just reminded me again, God is faithful. And the second thing I want to share with you is I believe God that His plans are always perfect. Our plans are not always perfect, but His plans are always perfect. You know, God knows everything. It's not a, you know, you, know, you ever think about surprise is never an emotion God feels? Surprise is only an emotion we feel. Uh, we, we, we get shocked, but He knows. He knows he knows what's going to happen to you tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but God does. It may surprise you what's going to take place tomorrow, but it won't surprise God. And so He knows. He knows the way that we're going. He knows our successes. He'll know, he knows whether we're going to succeed tomorrow or fall flat on our face. God already knows that. He knows the end, the Bible says, from the beginning. But through it all, God will be faithful. You know, it would be so much easier. In fact, we talked about it briefly that there for a while, it seemed like any time we left town, whether it was a mission trip or whether vacation or whatever, somebody would end up going to the hospital. Uh, whether it be a heart attack or uh, gallbladder surgery or something would come up and someone would have to go to the hospital whenever we left town. And uh, thankfully, I don't think that happened this time. But God knows that. But it really helped me if you all are... You know, if you know you're going to have a heart attack or you know something's going to happen to you, just let me know, would you? And I'll pencil in the date and we can keep that clear, all right? But it doesn't work that way, does it? But God knows that. Uh, God's plans are perfect. God never gets surprised. As mentioned, uh, now Mexico does not allow buses to go in, period. Nobody rides the tour bus into Mexico. They have outlawed all buses. And so now, whenever BPS takes the trip in, they have to go in vans. Uh, and so they've, they've really tightened up on that. And, you know, that, that was a surprise to us, but it wasn't a surprise to God. God knew that. And uh, we fit the folks in the vans. Uh, God, is, God is very purposeful in his plans. God, God isn't slipshod in his plans. God is purposeful. He's intentional. And we don't always understand why God lets some things happen, but God always does what's right. I may not see it now, you may not see it now, but we'll, as the songwriter said, we'll understand it better by and by. And we'll begin to see it when that day comes. God is faithful. God's Plans are perfect. As you heard tonight, 
The other thing that obviously always sticks out when you go on these trips is God answers prayer. God answers prayer. We, it, you, you really have it emphasized to pray about everything. And you begin to pray about everything. It starts Saturday evening with prayer up on the mountain. When he mentioned that tonight, but after dinner you drive in, in El Paso up on the mountain and you overlook El Paso and Juarez and the lights are coming up and it's getting dark and it's just, it's just phenomenal when you realize every one of those lights represents a soul. Every one of those lights represents somebody who needs Jesus Christ. And what, a, what an amazing sight it is. And you pray on the mountain for God to use us. We pray, as was mentioned, to, to get through the border and not to have any problems. We pray as we go out with the John and Romans that folks will be receptive. And, they'll even, and it's not unusual. Once you pass the John and Romans out, it's not unusual to come back through and people will be reading them and looking at them. You, you didn't see anybody take it and throw it on the ground like you might see in America. And so it's just, uh, just amazing to know the, 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 the prayers that you learn to pray. You learn to depend on God. It's so easy for people to get distracted, and so you learn to pray during the meeting, as was mentioned with the young people. I remember one particular night, I don't remember what night it was, that there's a fellow who came and as, as Brother Hector was up there speaking, he was, oh, he was way, he was way back here. And I, and I saw him and I, I, I prayed for that guy as he was listening. And in a little bit I saw that he had moved up to about here. And then a little bit later I looked and he had moved all the way up to here. And man, he was just zeroed in on what Hector was saying. And Hector Jimenez is a wonderful preacher. Just amazing the... How he, how he, the Lord uses him, and they, they, they listen intently to what he's saying. And then I saw when he prayed and, and asked the folks to raise their hand if they accepted Christ, that fellow's hand went up, and he accepted the Lord as a savior. See, that's that's praying, praying that God will open their heart. Learn to pray. Learn to depend on God. Brother Moreland mentioned that one of the fellows in his Thursday morning we have a testimony time down there at BPS and people begin to give their testimonies of what God had done in their heart and this man stood up and he gave his testimony about how he he really felt like he had failed uh, the Lord because God had he had seen a couple sitting outside their home you understand you're in a park and the homes are relatively close by and their speakers are up so you, you can hear it even sitting in your yard and they're just sitting in a couple chairs uh, listening uh, to this and he said, God spoke to his heart to get somebody to witness to them. He was one of the, from one of the churches in America here. And he said, and I didn't do it. I didn't listen. And he said, and about that time, he said, it, it wasn't long after that, he said, Brother Moreland come walking up, and there was one of the men there from, I believe, where's Ron? He's out playing checkers. Okay. And uh, he... he uh, I think it was from one of the national churches there in Mexico. And he, he said, oh, I want you to meet. And he introduced Ron to this guy. And Brother Moreland said, come with me. And guess where he went? To that couple who was sitting outside. And that man began to talk to them. And, and Ron went on and did things. We had the service. And uh, that fella found Ron afterwards. And he told him, he said, uh, Arturo, whoever it was, whoever the Mexican fellow was, he said he wanted me to especially let you know that couple both accepted Christ as their Savior. See, and this guy thought he failed. He said, well, you know what? He didn't fail. God had Ron come up, and he was Ron to that guy, and God had already spoken to Ron's heart that so many needs to witness these people, and they ended up getting saved. See, God knows what he's doing, and God answers prayer. The Lee Summit Church from near Kansas City, Missouri. They got in their bus to come down. Um, and they got as far as Oklahoma City and their bus broke down. And they, they were on an off-ramp, thankfully. And he coasted down that off-ramp and got the turn and he rolled right into a Love's uh, truck stop. So at least if you get stranded, you're stranded where there's restrooms and food and it's all good. 
So they, they worked on it, couldn't get started. They were sending a replacement bus. And they sent the replacement bus down. They waited 12 hours for the bus to get there. And finally, the replacement bus gets there. They, they load everything off the one bus, get it on that bus. The guy gets in the driver's seat, and it won't start. Nothing. You know, and the driver gave the testimony. He said, I'm saying, Lord, if you don't want us to go to Mexico, that, you know, fine, you know. And he said they didn't. And, and finally, if they're, they're banging on it. They're working on it. They're trying to figure it out. Can't get it to start. And one of them said, we haven't prayed. We're trying to work on it. We're trying to fix it. We haven't prayed. They invited the kids up, and kids got off in groups. They got off the bus, and they went in groups, and they all started praying. The men there working on it prayed. He said, I got back in, got the driver's seat, turned the key, and guess what? Fired right up. Hey, if God can, God can take care of human bodies, he can take care of engines too. And God answered prayer. You know what they did? They ran that bus from Oklahoma City all the way to El Paso. They never shut it off again. They left it running when they filled up, but they, they got safely to El Paso. And God was teaching some young people there about prayer. It got them to BPS. A.C. Dixon said this, When we depend on organizations, we get what organizations can do. We depend on education, we get what education can do. When we depend on man, we get what man can do. But when we depend on prayer, we get what God can do. Prayer. Prayer. God is faithful. His plans are perfect. God answers prayer. Ron mentioned that that uh, van that overheated. One of them did. And how it, 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 it a cracked radiator. When they got back to BPS that night, they finally looked at it and they saw the crack and there was nothing in the radiator. Absolutely nothing. There's no reason why they shouldn't have blown the engine. It was just God who got it back there safely and they were able to, I think, they ordered a radiator and got it replaced. That's God. See, God answering prayer. Number four, let me give you lesson number four that I thought of. The Word of God is powerful. It's, it's just amazing. You know, you go around and, and you pass out John and Romans and invite them to a meeting at the park. There's no flyers. There's nothing to advertise the time. You just go around and tell them there's a meeting at the park. And uh, you give them a John and Romans. And, and it's just amazing when Brother Hector gives the plan of salvation, he speaks to them, he has them open up and look at it in the Bible, look at it in their John and Romans, and all these folks are opening up and following along with them in the John and Romans. You know why? The Word of God is powerful. And, and they're seeing it and they're reading it. In fact, it, how many of you have ever heard of Juarez, Mexico? Hmm? How many of you heard of what a nice place it is? Yeah, that's what I thought. And uh, no, how many heard it's a real dangerous place? A lot of crime and cartels and drug. Yeah, you know it is. It is now dropped way down on the list. And part of that, by the way, I think uh, where's Bob? Do I see Bob come in. Bob, what year was it that they went in with that? Well, I was been and distributed what a hundred thousand. Twenty ten, I think. Okay, they. Uh, some folks from, from uh, Milford and other churches went in. I think they had a hundred some men. And they went in and did a blitz of Juarez passing out John and Romans. Over a hundred thousand of them. And, and of course that's the area we're in as well this week and these other groups. And here they, they begin to see the crime rate steadily go down. And there's no, they can try to attribute anything they want. You know what it is? It's the power of God's word. The power of the Word of God. Oh, they won't want to give that credit uh, on the news, but that's what's happening. You won't saturate an area with that much of the Word of God and it not have an effect on people. It has an effect. They had over a 40% drop in their crime rate. You know what America needs? America needs the Word of God. America needs the Bible. America will never be great until it's godly. You won't make America great again Simply by helping the economy. We'll make America again by making good deals. You're going to make America great again if you make America godly again. That's the only hope we got. It's great to be able to put together scriptures. They got the 
one day I think they folded covers and now they got to staple the, the, the scriptures. You get to actually put together the John and Romans that you're going to pass out to the folks on the street. And that's a wonderful time. You know, it was great. One night uh, they let us know, I think it was Monday night, the park we were at, there's a couple in the church we worked with, a Mexican couple, that they were, they were saved six years earlier at that very park at a meeting just like that. They just came, got a John and Romans. They both accepted Christ that night. Now this fellow's in the church, he and his wife, and they're serving the Lord. In fact, he's enrolled in the Bible Institute there. May end up being a preacher someday. See, isn't that exciting? Those are things that, that sometimes you don't get to hear the, the, the rest of the story, so to speak, of what happens to them. But uh, everybody who raised their hand, everybody who uh, said they received Christ, they get a New Testament, and someone from the church is with them, writing down their information and getting information to, to follow up on them and try to help them in their Christian life. It's uh, just amazing. God's Word changes lives. It still changes lives. The Gospel is still the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. And so it's great. God's faithful. His plans are perfect. He answers prayer. The Word of God's powerful. Another thing I took away from this week is you know, we're not alone in the battle. There's other good churches out there that are doing a job for God. We had a church there from Colorado, a church from Missouri, a church from Virginia, and two of our churches from Ohio. And, uh, of course, the churches in Mexico that partnered with us. And, you know, it's interesting. No matter, though you come from all parts of the country, there's an instant bond that you have because of Jesus Christ. An instant bond that you have. And even, even with the churches in Mexico, it's a, there's a language barrier, but there's just a bond that you feel and you have with these folks because of Jesus Christ. Unless you know we're not alone in the battle. There's, there's other people out there standing for what's right. There's other people out there that are concerned about reaching the lost for Jesus Christ. We're not, we're not by ourselves in this. Don't ever get to think that, don't, don't get the Elijah complex that I, only I am left, you know. No one else is doing it but me. That's not true. That's not true. Where we found brethren. <laughs> we found brethren. And some friendships were made this week and uh, some uh, good contacts. Uh, it was a real blessing for me. Uh, one of the ladies in the group from Virginia is Brother and Mrs. McCombie. Mother and Mrs. McCombie are BIMI representatives out west. Uh, this church supported them since before I came. And uh, they're our missionaries, and their daughter and her husband were on the missions trip. And I got to meet Amy. And then, and then another, the, the youth pastor and his wife from the church in Longmont, Colorado, uh, her name was Hannah. Her maiden name was Hannah Wallace. Uh, Mike and Mary Wallace are missionaries in Mexico City. Their daughter was there. So we had two daughters of missionaries we support out of our church. And uh, we found cistern too, all right? Brethren and cistern, and uh, got the fellowship with them. And when you saw, Paul said again, when he saw them, he thanked God and he took courage. That's what it does when you get with other believers in other churches and you see them from around the country. These are folks who are serving God and love God and running to reach their community for Christ. And, and it's a wonderful thing. I think the brethren did that for us this week. God's faithful. His plans are perfect. He answers prayer. The Word of God's powerful. We're not alone in the battle. And then the last thing is this. He enjoys when we live by faith. God enjoys it when we live by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. When we see no possible way, but we trust God anyway, He likes that. And He enjoys that we live that way. And then we get to see Him move. Because we can't do anything. There were folks who, who didn't have any way to go. And yet they said, well, I'm going to go anyway. I'm just going to sign up. I'm going to commit to go. And listen, and they prayed. And some of you sitting here were the answer to their prayer. God touched your heart and you gave. And some of the things that were done in their lives here this week, that's fruit that abounds to your account. Because you gave to help them to go. You made it possible for many of them to go. And we're grateful for that, and I'm sure they are as well. God just says, trust me. In fact, 
Proverbs. In all thy ways, do what? Acknowledge Him. And what will He do? He will direct thy path. So it's our part and His part. Our part's just to, in all my ways, acknowledge Him. His part is, He will direct my path. You know where we get in trouble? When we try to do His part. We, we, oh, I acknowledge Him, but here's what I think I should do. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm acknowledging Him, but here's what I, oh, no, I can't do that. Well, then, we're, we want to acknowledge Him, but we're trying to direct our path, too. We can't do that. That's God's job. Let Him direct your path. You just, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. You say, well, I just, I just don't see any way I can go. Then I guess you'll have to go by faith. See, if you can't see it, you have to go by faith. Faith is not sight. Otherwise, faith is no more faith. And so, you have to go by faith. You don't have to see it. You have to trust God can see it. And God will provide a way. That's faith. So God uses people who walk by faith and not by sight. Well, downstairs when you leave tonight, there's a sign-up sheet for the Mexico missions trip 2019. Some of you ought to put your name on that. Many of you ought to put your name on that. If you don't want to, hey, if you don't want to drive out, fly out. We can know ahead of time. We'll get a rate, get a good, good flight. The group from Virginia all flew out. And probably for, not, for, for a couple hundred more dollars, it might be well worth it <laughs> than to take the 30-hour trip home. But as you heard Emma testify, you could ride in a van of teenagers for 30 hours. Why would you pass that up? Some of you just decided I'm flying, right? But, but you know, wouldn't it be nice, wouldn't you like it to experience it for yourself and not just hear what other people say about it? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to see it for yourself? You really should. You shouldn't just rely on what someone else says. Who knows what God might do in your life? Who knows what God might, might uh, decisions He might bring you to. Things He could teach you if you'll go in 2019. I just encourage you to walk by faith and not by sight. Those are some things I wanted to share with you from the trip. God's faithful. His plans are perfect. He answers prayer. The Word of God's powerful. We're not alone in the battle. And He enjoys it when we live by faith. And you know, we found brethren. And we were thankful, and we took courage. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies tonight. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful week there in Mexico and in, in El Paso. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Wynn, Brother Hector, the staff there, their wives, Lord, the, the, the servants that they are, the hard work that they put into the week to make us, to make it very enjoyable and as comfortable as they could for us. And yet, Lord, we thank you for what you did in each one of our hearts and lives. And Lord, I would wish everyone could see what we've seen, could see the, the over 100 people that accepted you as their Savior. The way the folks would receive your word. The way they come out to listen and to watch. How excited they were that someone would come from another country, from America, to give them, to share something with them. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to burden our hearts to reach the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you for what we've seen and what we've heard. And I pray you'll burden some hearts of people in this room to say, you know, I'd like to see that. I'd like to experience that. I'd like to see God up close like that as well and see him work in a miraculous way. And I pray you'd minister to people's hearts that way tonight, God, and that they'd step out by faith and say, I'm going to, by faith, commit to go on the missions trip next year. And ask God what he would have me to do and what expect God to do great things in my life. Speak to, speak to people's hearts in that way tonight, Lord. 
and I'll thank you for it. Right now, with her heads bowed and her eyes closed, just kind of shared a testimony tonight, not really preaching. But I wonder tonight if the Lord maybe tugged at your heart. Maybe it's about going on a trip. Maybe it's just a reminder that God's faithful. That He always keeps His promises. Maybe it's a reminder that He really does answer prayer and you need to begin to pray about everything. Maybe it's just that there's other people out there doing the work for God as well. We're not alone. Maybe it's an encouragement to live by faith and not by sight. And get God involved in your life. Do some things where there's no way you can see it yourself. God has to come through for you. That in all your ways you'll acknowledge Him, but you'll let Him direct your path. I don't know how God may have spoken to your heart tonight, but if He spoke to your heart tonight and you say, Preacher, the Spirit of God dealt with my heart this evening. Pray for me tonight. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. The Lord has spoken to your heart tonight. Respond to Him this evening. If you're here tonight and you've heard us talk about people accepting Christ and people coming to the Lord and you don't really know what that's all about. In other words, you're not sure that if you died, you'd go to heaven. When we pray and after I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet, our pianist will play, and Bob will sing. We'll have what we call an invitation. And Christians will come and pray at the altar. All you need to do is, you've, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, would you slip from your seat and come to the front? We have someone who's been trained. They'll take you aside privately and show you from the Bible how you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. Don't come to a service and hear about people being saved and hear about folks in another country coming to know Christ and walk out of the service and not know Christ yourself. Receive Him as your Savior tonight. Whatever it is God's spoken to your heart about, listen to Him this evening. Father, thank You for meeting with us and for speaking to our hearts this evening. Thank You again for what You did in each one of our lives and hearts this past week. Thank You for safety as we traveled out and traveled back home, watching over us, giving us great weather all the way. Now, Lord, I pray your will will be done in this invitation time. Thank you for ministering to our hearts tonight. May you, may you help each individual to do exactly what you're bidding them to do. I feel like there might be some young people here this evening who feel like your call is on their life to be a missionary, to go to another country and tell them about Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray they'd come and say, I believe God wants me to be a missionary and I'm surrendered to do whatever God wants me to do. I pray they'll come tonight as well. Have your way in each heart, please, and I'll thank you for it. Quietly with your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. She plays by the Bible, sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this evening, will you? Oh, to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. In his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender, humbly at His feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, Take me, Jesus, take me now. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender. 
Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. This on. There you go. Look this way just for a moment. Um, the my wife and I are leaving again in the morning. <laughs> her sister and her husband, as many of you know, are missionaries in Ukraine, and they're home for the summer. And uh, these next three days, they're they're basing in a mission house up in uh, the state up north. And uh, so we're going on another missions trip, and uh, to that state. But um, and her brother uh, and his wife are flying in from down in Florida, uh, so they can spend three days with them. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll come back Wednesday afternoon, so we can be here Wednesday night for church. Uh, but it's the only opportunity the her, her brother and her sister and her all have to get together. Uh, and so we'll be driving up. We have to actually pick her brother up and his wife from the airport in Detroit at 10:30 tomorrow morning. So we'll have to leave probably around six in the morning to to get there. So uh, just so you know, we'll be out of town for a few days, and then we'll be back Wednesday afternoon. Okay, and uh, I'll be available to you uh, if it's an emergency, okay? And uh, don't just, you know, call or text, say, how you doing? Okay, and uh, I appreciate your understanding in that. It's just the only, that's the, the time that they could fit it in their schedule with their churches they're checking in with and conferences they're in and their furlough time. And when her brother could get loose from his responsibility, he pastors in Florida. And so it's just a time that it, uh, it just had to come back to back So uh, from the missions conference. So it's just uh, what it is. So uh, we will... Uh, get ready to go there but we'll be back Wednesday night ready for church and ready to talk about Peter all right and um, is there anything else I think that's all the sign up sheets down there you walk by there and God's nudging you you better go that way and uh, put your name on there and just trust God and uh, is that the first week May 31 to That's June Friday. 7. That's, yeah, leave it on Friday. So it starts June 1 down there on Saturday. Uh, and if you fly, you can fly in on Saturday. It goes Saturday to Friday. So those would be the dates with flying. But if you want to fly, put that down there. Put down fly, and we see how many we get. We'll go through and get a group with the airline. And you get a good rate, and they hold seats for you up to a certain date. You can add and subtract and change names and that kind of thing. So uh, we'll, we'll work that out, and we'll try to find out when the best price is for that. Question, Andy? Um, no, I just wanted to say I got tickets for tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Okay. The, the couples class, how much are they, $3? Okay. Yeah. Monday night, the Clippers game here in town, they're, the couples class is going, and they have some extra tickets. So if you're interested in going along, and uh, it's only $3, yeah, Emma Jean wants to go. And uh, it's, the idea is to get away, never mind. Um, okay, so if you want to do that, see Andy. Anybody interested in that? You just see Andy? Yeah, I know all the kids are raising their hand. And uh, you can go see a ball game and have a hot dog for a dime. Okay? Uh, it's a pretty good deal. So uh, if you want to get in on that, see him. He'll give you the details, and uh, I know it will help them out. Okay? All right, let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you for a great day today. Sure has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you did today, what you did last week with the missions trips. And, Lord, we pray your blessing upon bearing precious seed and the ministry there and even this coming week as they're preparing for a Navajo trip and groups will be coming in for that. May your hand be upon that week there. Lord, I pray you'll help us this week to be doing your will for our lives and to be pointing people to Jesus this week. Help us all to be aware of those opportunities that you give us, those divine appointments that you put in our path and we'll tell folks about the Savior this week. 
Make us mindful of your presence now as we leave this place tonight. And we'll thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.